Welcome back everybody, my name is Tucker and in today's video we're going to be talking about Blake Griffin and the Detroit Pistons. But really quickly before we get started, if you're new here and you like the NBA, consider subscribing. I upload basically every single day. Okay, so Blake Griffin. And it's kind of weird because I definitely didn't expect to be talking about the Detroit Pistons on the channel as much as I have been recently. We talked about the Andre Drummond thing, I did a whole trade machine video on them as a team, and now there's some Blake Griffin news to talk about. And the big deal here is he's considering having season ending surgery. This has not been a good season for him at all. When you look at the numbers statistically, this is a guy that made an all NBA team last year. And this year has just really, really struggled to make shots. His points per game are down. And mostly it seems like that's because he just, he hasn't been healthy. He had a really good season last year. And like I said, made all NBA, but, but you know, was just healthy for the entire season. The, the skill level of this guy has never really been in question, but it's been about him being able to stay healthy. And he was healthy for most of the regular season last year, started to break down a little bit towards the end of the year and has spent most of the off season trying to recover from, you know, the, the wear and tear of the year before. And now it seems like it's going to basically rob him of this entire season. He's played less than 20 games to this point. And it seems like, you know, his season is probably going to be over and potentially, you know, we could be looking at the end of Blake Griffin, certainly as like a star, superstar player, but he might even be winding down his career as a whole at this point, just given the history of injuries and now the struggles that he's having once again. And this is, you know, potentially a real disaster situation for this Pistons team because Griffin's about to be 31 years old, but it's it's not your typical, you know, 31 year old. This is a guy that's been in the league for a long time that has played a bruising athletic style specifically in the beginning of his career. And again, it's just continued to struggle struggle with injury issues but beyond that there's a there's contractual issues here as well he's under contract for the rest of this season as well as two more that third year is a player option but there's no way he's going to turn down that money and he's going to be making over 35 million dollars for every season that is left on his contract and again it seems you know at least plausible that maybe he won't even really be playing more than 50 games for the next couple of seasons and even when he does play you know the level of his play is certainly going to be really really decreased and i really can't emphasize enough like how bad this situation could potentially be for the pistons this guy is the ninth highest paid player in the entire nba this year and you could say that's justified to a certain extent because again last year's third team all nba one of the better front court players in the entire league but even with that this was only a team that you know was in a, the back half of the eastern conference playoffs and just hasn't really been a true threat in a long long time and this this move that they made initially to bring him in a couple of years ago at this point was supposed to raise their ceiling and all it's really done is get them you know like the eighth seed for the last couple of seasons and that's really kind of what i want to take a look at here is not just the situation in the news now even though that's obviously a big deal that he could potentially be ending his season but also just looking back at the trade that brought him to detroit and considering if this team could have seen this coming and you know what kind of of, of thinking they were going through at the moment that they made this deal. So let's go back to the terms of the initial deal. A few seasons ago at this point, this was a mid-season trade that kind of came out of nowhere. He had just signed a big extension with the Clippers the previous offseason, and then they decided to move on from him just halfway through his first year uh, with that contract. So the, the terms of the deal were Avery Bradley, Tobias Harris, Boban, and a first round pick that ended up becoming Miles Bridges, but the Clippers swapped for SGA in exchange for Blake Griffin, plus other stuff that doesn't really matter. And again, this was a really big deal at the time because it was kind of out of nowhere and the Pistons were kind of a middling franchise. They had Andre Drummond, they had Reggie Jackson, who at the time still had a pretty good reputation. Uh, but beyond that, they didn't have a whole lot else going for them. They'd made some other moves. They traded one of the Morris brothers to the Celtics for Avery Bradley. Uh, and they were you know, trying to do some different things. And at the end of the day, they just said, hey, let's consolidate our assets this guy, Blake Griffin, you know, even given his injury issues, he's getting closer to 30 years old and he just signed this big extension. You know, let's bring him in, let's raise our star power and let's see if that raises the ceiling of our team, maybe make some other moves around that. Maybe we could be really good with this Griffin Drummond front court. But when you're really looking at the pieces, the Avery Bradley thing's not that big of a deal. He didn't end up being very good for the next couple of seasons. Is having a bit of a resurgence this year with the Lakers, but not a huge loss there. The biggest piece for sure here is Tobias Harris, who is now a max contract player 
player, whether that's deservedly so or not with Philadelphia is up to you, but still a really good player that had a ton of success with the Clippers. And then they ended up flipping uh, as well in a trade. And then you've got Boban who, you know, has bounced around the league a little bit, but at least a serviceable big. And the first round pick is huge as well. Like I said, the pick itself ended up becoming Miles Bridges, but the Clippers, you know, flipped that for some second round picks and ended up getting Shea Gilgis Alexander. And undoubtedly, when you consider the contract situation and the age and the injury issues that Blake's having, even if you took away everything else out of this trade and you just said, hey, would you rather have Blake right now with, you know, some of the contract stuff or Miles Bridges or SGA, you'd definitely rather have one of those younger guys given the Pistons situation right now than Blake Griffin in the next couple of years on his contract. And that is, you know, the biggest issue here is this was a team that attempted to, to cash in on some younger assets for a big time store and just ignored all of the red flags that came with it. And it would have been worth it if the team's success had been higher than what it's been at this point. If this trade had landed them, you know, like a top four seed at any point in the last couple of years in the Eastern Conference while Blake's been there, then maybe you could start to say that that risk was worth it because at some point you do, you know, kind of have to swing for the fences and you have to try and make some moves and you have to consolidate some of those younger assets when you're in a situation that the Pistons were in where you were just kind of stuck in the middle of the road. And I appreciate them going for that. But when you're looking at this trade in hindsight, it's definitely not been a good move because it really hasn't gotten them that much higher in the standings and they gave up some really significant assets. And when you really think about, you know, two of the pieces in here, whether it's SG SGA, you know, the pick they, that they ended up using uh, on SGA or Tobias Harris, those are pieces that helped spark this turnaround by the Clippers you know, into being a really good team last year that was kind of, you know, an up and coming team and then turn them into a free agency destination. And now, in my opinion, they're the best team in the entire league this season when healthy. And they use these Pistons assets to put themselves in that position, which just makes this trade look even worse for Detroit. And so now moving forward for this team, there's not a lot of options for them other than to just hope that Blake gets healthy. And, you know, they should have, I guess, explored trading him at some point, but it's kind of tough to do over the offseason. He's coming off of a really good season, so you don't really want to trade him immediately after. Uh, and he's going through these injury issues, so his value isn't really there. It looks like they're going to take a look at trading away Andre Drummond. And this is a team that just really doesn't have much of a direction. And if you're looking at, you know, which franchises and teams I would least like to be a fan of around the league right now in terms of their future, the Pistons are up there, man. Like, I mean, you've got Andre Drummond, but I'm not a huge fan of, of the skill level that he brings to the table. He's a productive player, but maybe not someone that helps you win a ton of games. You've got Luke Kennard, and that's about it. And you're going to have some really big contract and salary issues now with this Blake Griffin thing and no real way to get out of it. You kind of just have to wait for another two whole years until this contract is up unless things change pretty drastically drastically, he's definitely not going to be worth the money that he's being paid. And it's like I said, it's plausible that this could be kind of the end of his uh, of his career, certainly as a star. And that's a really tough situation to be in. But it's a situation that the Pistons put themselves in and they had to know that that was the case when they made the deal, right? Like there's no way that they looked at this situation initially when they traded for Blake and thought that this wasn't a possibility at all, given all the injury issues. So it's an unfortunate situation to be in. But looking back on it, like it's definitely something that they should have considered and saw coming. And maybe they did and just decided that the risk was worth it. But right now, it really doesn't seem like that was the case. And essentially, this is going to turn into a cautionary tale for other teams around the league to, to really consider what assets you're giving up and, and the situation around the player that you're that you're trading for, right? Because at the time, I think there were kind of mixed reactions to this deal. Uh, I kind of liked it initially because I, I'm a fan of teams taking risks to try and get out of, you know, out of the middle and at least trying to make a move. Uh, but in the long run, it was pretty clear that this was going to be a risky move. And now it's, you know, definitely backfiring on them. So maybe this is just a bump in the road for him. But when you're talking about a guy that's going to be coming off of season ending surgery, going into next season, he's going to be 31 years old and has had a history of injury issues the way that he has. And again, has had, you know, a long bruising career at this point in the NBA. I don't have high hopes for that guy to end up, you know, being anything really significant uh, moving forward until I, until I see otherwise. Like if you're looking at his numbers from this season uh, and his health and his games played, it is not pretty at all for Blake. So I'm hoping that he gets healthy for Pistons 
fans sake and he can turn it around and at least you know be a borderline all-star type caliber player for the next two seasons on his contract but right now this looks like a disaster situation for the Pistons and, and one they definitely don't want to be in but there you have it that is going to be the end of today's video and I thank you all very much for watching once again my name is Sucker if you missed any of my previous videos then be sure to check out the boxes on screen thanks again and I'll see you all next time